So in an effort to continue thinking with Whitehead, uh, I wanted to ask a question. And the question is, what is an electron? And normally, um, we would say that the electron is something discovered by, by physicists. Uh, it's a feature of nature, of objective reality, right? And we would oppose the objective reality discovered by the physicist to the subjective fantasy uh, imagined by the artist, let's say. And so art and physics are placed in opposition with one another. The electron being something discovered through the empirical means and the logical and mathematical means of the scientist. And I think this is fine so far as it goes, but we've also we're going to think with Whitehead, you got to conceive of a way of, in which subject and object, uh, illusion, or at least appearance and reality, can be made to coincide. And for Whitehead, who was also a physicist and a mathematician, um, what the physicist is doing by describing an electron is not simply discovering something already existing in the natural world to which our descriptions correspond. Rather, the physicist is participating in bringing forth this phenomenon, known as an electron. And in some sense, the electron is an imaginative construction created by the physicist's way of questioning nature, by the problem posed by the physicist. So it isn't simply discovered, it is also created. It isn't just created though, it's not just a figment of the physicist's imagination. The physicist is discovering something, but this discovery is uh, only possible because of all of the, the measuring devices and, and technologies that the physicist has constructed in order to bend, bend nature's arm in such a way, to put nature on the rack, as Bacon put it and in a sense to torture nature so that it gives the results that the physicist is looking for. The results which would conform to the theory that the physicist is, a, is trying to verify. So when we ask what is an electron, we're asking not just about nature but about the human interest in nature, about the questions that human beings put to nature. Because really, what is an electron? If we ask for its, its true nature, independent of us as knowers, independent of us as questioning physicists, well, it's neither a discrete entity, localizable here or there, nor is it simply a wave that is ever, ever present, equally here and equally there. It's neither of these things, though we use these ways of speaking of, you know, particles and waves um, in an attempt to get at something that's always beyond our descriptions. No doubt there is something to which our descriptions of electricity refer, but we can't ever know what that might be outside of our descriptions, and I would suggest that it's silly to even pose the question what an electron might be outside of our descriptions and experiments and theories. An electron comes into existence between the human being and reality. It isn't simply out there waiting to be discovered. It's an imaginative construction, not just of the human, but of but of reality itself. So reality itself is constructive and creative. Uh, it's never ready-made and given and finished. It's constantly discovering itself. And as science progresses and participates in this creative process of reality, you know, it, it goes through paradigm shifts and in 50 or 100 years, what we call an electron and refer to as electricity today, 
or electromagnetism might be understood based on an entirely different paradigm or set of theoretical assumptions. And then what we thought was a, an object existing in nature independent of our experience will become a fantasy, a figment of our imagination. So we've got to balance ourselves here between subject and object and not assume that science is completely free of subjectivity.